Welcome to the Celebrity Josh podcast, which is the name until I change it because I don't like it. And I'm Josh Rackless. Also, I don't like my name, so I'm going to change that. Maybe Chris Kepler will have some ideas for me. It is Friday, August 13th, 2021, 4.16 p.m. And, uh, you know, we're making it through the day uh, without any too much bad luck, hopefully. Uh, But we don't know how Chris's day is going. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Actually, my day is going pretty well. Yeah. Oh, exciting, exciting. Okay, so... I we are doing this on Skype, so if if uh, you're watching this, you can see the video, and if you're just listening to this, you can see the audio. I guess that's all ex- self-explanatory, but I'm just saying, if people want to look up on YouTube to see what we look like, you can do that. Um, I'm in Ottawa, Canada. Where are you? I'm in Seattle, Washington. Ah, oh, very nice. So you're across the continent, so it's like uh, 1 17 p.m. for you. Yep, it sure is. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> How's it going? I think the last time I heard about Seattle, were there like riots going on? Maybe I'm thinking of the G7 meeting or something. It's Portland that's getting burned down now. I don't know how Seattle's doing. Yeah, um, Portland kept burning after Seattle, you know, sort of quieted down. Now, right now it's hot. We're having extra heat and it's smoky. We're getting wildfire smoke. So from Canada. <laughs> yeah, my friend Kathleen, uh, who used to be my neighbor in Toronto, she lives in Vancouver again now and uh yeah she just texted me last night saying it's smoky she's got to get an air conditioning it's it's so so oh so you're blaming canada i see how it works okay (laughs) all right well well that's fine we'll take we'll take the blame makes us feel special to actually be influencing something um so uh do you have like you know if you were in in an elevator and i'll tell you a story about an elevator in a second no i'll tell you right now i just got into a twitter war on uh twitter about Somebody posted about getting insulted on an elevator and asked what happened. Everybody's piling on saying, oh, my God, you're mansplaining. I'm like, I was just wondering what happened. Um, So that's exciting. But if we were in an elevator and you were giving me your little pitch about who you are and what you do, what would it be? Yeah. I'm an audiobook narrator, producer, and consultant, writer, and voice actor, and also a podcaster. And I'm an actor with an IMDb page. And I specialize in bringing content to life with words, sound, and images. My gosh, that was a lot. I feel like I should, I should write that down so I can. Here, where's my scrap of paper here? Yeah, everyone says that's too much. All right, what do we, what do we got? So there was, there was voice. What? Okay, say those again. I'm gonna make a little point notes. <coughs> Audiobook narrator, producer, and consultant. All right. Well, why don't, why don't we just start with that? Audiobook, narrator, producer, and consultant. So a voice yep. actor, right? Yeah. Which is um, which is what I do. Actually, I just have a question. Like, yes. you're looking over there. What are you looking at? Is there webcam? Am I there? Do you have an external no, webcam? No, it's just where my, it's how my um, iPad is set up for some reason. Oh, do you have an external? No, you don't have an external webcam on it, do you? It's just uh, the no. No, it's just apparently how I've got it set up. All right, no worries. Yeah. Just curious. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Okay, so uh, so I'm a voice actor, so I'm curious about that. Um, yeah. And then did you? So do you? Spe- do you just do audio books? No, no, I do not only audio books, uh, e-learning. Okay, I do those too. Yeah. Yeah, and some video voiceover. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. so, wh- and what are, what is the producer aspect of that and consultant? That's, I taught myself how to produce audiobooks too, so I not only narrate them, I can produce them to audible standards. And what is, what does that mean? I, I do the editing and mastering also. Okay, so editing I do, like if I'm sitting in an audition or a gig, I'll just cut out my breaths yeah. and mouth clicks. And then mastering, um... What is that? Are you like adjusting levels or? Yes, adjusting levels and stuff. Um, Audible has really, well, all audiobook work, it's really specific levels that you need to engineer to. So I taught myself to do that. Oh, wow. I didn't know. And, and I also, you know, edit for pacing on audiobooks. So. Uh, is, and the ones that you narrate yourself or would you do that for other people too? I'm mostly the ones I narrate for myself. I did um, work with an author who wanted to self-narrate 
and uh, he didn't want to use the studio. So he managed to set it up so he could narrate at home. And then I edited and produced, mastered the book for him. Wow. So, okay. So you've made yourself a couple of, of all, like whole. So what would the consultant part be? Uh, the consultant part, I consult with authors who want to self-narrate their ah. book teaching them, you know, the finer points of narration, what to expect in the booth, what to think about, how to prep their book, things like that. Yeah. And how do they find you? Uh, usually, um, I end up usually getting referred through author coaches who often aren't interested in dealing with audiobook stuff, but, you know, they have an author that's asking, so they send them to me. What's an author coach? That's uh, there's actually a lot of them out there. They help authors write their books. Wow! So not that's not like a publisher or something that, or an editor even, just sort of. Well, it's, it's I guess it's one of those things on the internet now. You can just yes. you know make up your own job. I'm an author coach. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> they sort of shepherd them through the whole process. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Because I mean, that's what I'm realizing about everything. Like. Hey, if you figure out how to do something, then that's what you can help people with. Like I'm planning yeah. to start some Facebook groups for people and yes. I just realized, Hey, I can, I was going to make just one big one. Like I'll teach you everything I know, but I'm like, now I'm like, Hmm. Cause some people were like, well, I'm not interested in buying Bitcoin, but I want to learn voice acting. So there's no point in starting a group to uh, mash the thing together. So I'm like, yeah. okay, well maybe I'll just start a voice acting to teach people yeah. how to do that. Yeah. And then I could start. And then, it, and then it also brings together, like-minded people so it's all people trying to learn voice actors they can help each other and share these things yeah. and, and then it occurred to me i had this big brainstorm yesterday i was going to write it in a diary or something because i feel like i should start <laughs> making a diary because I'm, I'm always like oh when did i think of that idea and i never remember but it just occurred to me the benefit of starting a group on facebook is that then people can find you like nobody's going to randomly come across my name on Facebook. But if I start a group like the voice acting class that and if people are searching that, then they'll find the group. And then that way, you know, yeah. I'm building my community and brand and followers that yeah. way. So I'm pretty well, happy. with that. I actually just wrote a course on self narration for authors and published it on listenable.io. Listenable.io. I always love yeah. websites with the dot io. And in my head, I always <laughs> like make it an EO. So it's listen, listenable EO or something, but then I realized yeah. <laughs> that's not what it is at all. Um, so you made a course. So what was that again? It's a course on self narration for authors. I take them through the whole, all the way through, even to marketing their audio book. It's audio only. So I wrote it and then I narrated it myself. So yeah, you, you practiced what you preached. Yes. It's like if you <laughs> if you like this audio narration, then you should be listening to this audio narration. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's cool because that's what I um, in all these podcasts I've been listening to lately. That's what they say. Like you can be a coach or a consultant kind of thing, but then if you can make a course as well, that's great yes. because it'll yeah. say like it's then you can scale that. You only have so much time in the day to coach an individual person, but yes. Uh, and you put it on listenable.io? Yeah, I did it through listenable.io, yeah. It's, and it's, what, is, it's, what is that? It's a new app, and it's um, short. They specialize in short audio courses, so you can listen and learn. Hmm. Yeah, because I've only heard of, you know, Teachable and Thinkific and Skillshare, like video courses. Yeah, it's like that, only it's audio only. Hmm. And Never it's thought. short. Um, all their courses are pretty short. I think most of them are under an hour. So mine's I, only like 26 minutes. Wow, that's so great. Because, yeah. I mean, the one thing, yeah, I, like, I mean, I every now and then I think, oh, I could take a course in this and that, but I'm like, ah, it'd be expensive. and Or not expensive. Uh, just like take a long time. And, and also I got to sit there and watch a video. But I every day I go for like an hour jog and I listen to a podcast for an hour. So I yep. would listen to a course, you know. Yeah, so now you can listen to a course. Yes. And that, and I'm also like, I think Thinkific or one of those places emailed me a few years ago saying, hey, we need copywriter courses. Could you write one? I'm like, I don't even know how I'd start to do that. And so I just never did it. But even just hearing that, oh, I can do an audio course in just 26 yeah. minutes. So I can just bash yeah. that out. Yeah. Oh, you're on yeah. top of all the latest tech. <laughs> and what was the, what was the audible thing you did? Normally you, you, 
you do books for Audi Audible or what was that? Uh, well, most of the books I've narrated are published to Audible. Mm. And is that owned um, by Amazon? Yes. Okay, yes. so that's the big one. That's a good one. That's the big one, yes. And then normally the books you put. Okay, so those are people that hire you to narrate their books. Yes. And then how do they find you? Um, through acx.com. Um, sometimes through freelancer sites. I okay. see a lot more audiobooks coming through freelancer sites. And then author coaches, too, that refer right uh, for me to right. authors who who wants a narrator yeah. right right the famous author coaches and then i guess that's how it were like a book would exclusively be on audible it wouldn't be like you just narrate a book and then it goes out to all the, the places like a podcast with or something no it's yeah there's specific platforms for audiobooks audible's the biggest one mm -hmm. um then there's Find Away Voices. I also have a book out there on Find Away Voices. That's another large audiobook platform. Find Away Voices. Find Away Voices, yes. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Hmm. That's so much stuff. My mom yeah, listens that to that. Great because um, you don't need to have a published book to have an audiobook. Because on, on Audible, you, your book has to be published on Amazon be made into an audiobook for audible but find a way voices you you can just put an ebook that you self-published out there make it into an audiobook and put it up for sale so. ah okay so audible is only if there's like a paper or electronic like a written or version Kindle, of the book yeah and that has yeah. to be on amazon <laughs> but can anybody put a book on amazon like like if i just self-publish it or something yeah, anybody can put a, put a book on Amazon, yeah. Okay, but you have to do that first, and then you can say, okay, now yeah. I've got an audio version of it. I yeah. wonder I wonder why they do that. It, hmm. You don't have to do that with Find Away Voices. So. Yeah, interesting. I guess they just, I don't know, want to make sure people have their books there. I don't know. Give people uh, yeah. options. Very yeah. complicated, because my dad was reading yeah, in, uh, the Seinfeld book recently and I looked it up and I go, like, oh, there's an audio version where Seinfeld reads the book, you know, you can listen yep. to that. So, ooh, kind of thing. So he must have, maybe he did it so that, I don't know why. No, he doesn't need any money. I was like, man. Yeah, was, well, <laughs> most, yeah. most well-known actors or comedians or, you know, if they write a book, generally they're going to narrate it themselves. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I say, yeah, when I looked it up, I was like, oh, I wonder if there would be one that he narrates because, um, or, or one at all, but that's interesting that he narrates it, because then he's, I mean, yeah, especially with a voice that you know him, you kind of, it's yeah. all the timing and the voice. And everything. Yeah, the t yeah, especially, yeah. It wouldn't make any sense to have it the other way. Huh. And I was like, oh, does he have to put the voice on so he can have the book on? No, but it's the other way around. He has to have the book first. And... Yeah. Wow, so much going on. I want to self, I'm going to, I'm expired now. I just want to self-publish some things and then narrate my own book. Even if I, I was even thinking today, it's like, why not just, like as an experiment, I just want to try making a little book. Like, for example, I was going to write down the 10 things I do to make my voice acting faster. And maybe it's like a two oh, yeah. book or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then I could just, uh, maybe, you know, figure out how to make that a book on Amazon, like a mini book or something. Yeah. Because like oh, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I figure once I do the process, then like even with my podcast, it finally last year, I was like, I've been studying this for years, how to make one, how to get on iTunes. And I'm like, here, let me just sign up for hosting and then, okay, follow yeah. step by step. What do I have to do to make this file to get it up? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to force myself to. And then I was thinking I want to write like Christmas short story romances or something. Just because, <laughs> uh, I think I knew a girl a few years ago who said she wrote one like a page or two long and, uh -huh, and she yeah. sold it for a dollar on Amazon and, and sold yeah. like 14,000 copies because people like Christmas romances. And I'm like, what? I could do that. Wow. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then how did you get into all of this? I mean, I guess it's all relatively new stuff. It's not like, oh, you know, decades ago I started being a voice audible consultant person, you know? No, it's through my acting. You know, oh. I've been an actor for over 20 years now. Okay, okay. So, and I used to be a singer. And so, you know, voice acting and singing sort of go together. Yeah. And um, so someone said, oh, why don't you, you know learn voice acting and then I, I really loved it because it combined my singing and acting skills into yeah, one. yeah 
That's pretty oh. cool. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I started, I was working as a copywriter in Ottawa like 20 years ago, and then we needed a voice for a couple of radio ads. Uh, and I was like, I'll do them. There's no actors here kind of thing. And, and yeah. then I cassette tape with a couple of radio ads when I went back to Toronto, and I made copies on my double tape deck that I got my, for, for my bar mitzvah, and I mailed them to all the talent agencies, and then there was just another actor at, yeah. or another copywriter at my ad agency that had an agent. I said, who's your agent? And I sent them my tape, and they're like, yeah, we don't have anybody who sounds like you, so we'll try you out. Um, <laughs> oh, and, nice. Yeah, so that that's how I got in, and then um, these days, yeah, like I was just on this, a Zoom call, like they were doing a focus group for the ACTRA voice actors asking what issues we want in the contract or the new things, and uh, and I was like, I haven't had an audition in two years, so I don't even know. I'm, I'm just listening. I'm contributing. I can't contribute here. Oh. <laughs> uh, but but all you know, there's there's so much stuff that's online now. There's so many oh, websites. Yeah. You can just submit your own auditions and yeah. record your own stuff from home. So, well, you you have to you have yeah. to know. I I just finished a class in May. Was you know learning to do a better job of self tape because that's all it is. You know, mm. I just did a commercial audition yesterday. It's all you know. We have to set it up here in the you know. Yeah, well, that's what they were talking about in the, in the Zoom call. Like somebody was saying you know, maybe we should get like $5 or something to audition because we have to be the producers now. And oh, yeah. why do we have to know this stuff? And in the old days, you didn't have to be a producer. And it's like, well, yeah, those were the old days when you'd go in and they'd have a, you know, an eight track or something. And yeah. But now it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it's not, yeah. you can do it from your iPhone now or like whatever you have, you oh, know, yeah. a, a good mic yeah. to watch too. So that's what we use my Android phone. It's the best thing we've got right now. You know, oh. like most, you know, it's not an expensive Android phone, but it does a great job. It does a great video. For your, for what, what do you do with your phone? Like for auditions or filming? For auditions, yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's for sure. Yeah. What I use, yeah. Yeah. But I was talking about like even the voice actors who saying, oh, I don't know how to record my voice or edit it or whatever. It's like, well, figure oh, it out. Oh, Lord. That's, yeah. You have to, I mean, you have to have your own studio nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, every audition I get, they're like, do you have a yeah. home studio? I've never had, they're always asking whether you have, uh, what's it called? Like the, the super Source Connect? Or oh, Source Connect, yeah. IS, ISDN, all that nonsense? I don't know. It's, uh, it's pretty much Source Connect. I don't, uh, ISDN is like pretty much dead. Okay. So it's all Source Connect, yeah. I'll have to look into that. Cause I, I was always wondering. I still don't quite understand what it is. I was like, does that I have to get something wired to my computer or like? Yeah, it's special software. Yeah, it's a that soft that connects your your recording setup into their recording setup. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I figured it wouldn't even work with Wi-Fi. You have to have it plugged into the the wall. Maybe I don't know. I think it works with Wi-Fi, yeah. Okay, that's good, because I, I could have done that in my old condo, but currently I'm living in my parents' basement, and I don't have... The, the, the internet's all the way upstairs, and I have did oh. all this research how to get the cord down here, and there was no yeah. way, and so I just got a, a Google Mesh system, which actually works now. It looks like I've got full bars down here, but when wow. I moved in here like a year ago, I couldn't get internet down here at all, so I couldn't do my comedy, oh, you know, my comedy class shows or anything. Oh, no. Sitting on the porch all summer, just... But now I'm down here. I got my little office. I've got my green screen made out of paper from the dollar store. Yeah. I'm rocking down here. Ha! So, well, yes. Good. Well, that's that's good. So, I, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to I've been trying to figure out what what is my podcast about and stuff and I I figure, you know what? Wh what I like listening to is just talking to people about what they do and how they got into it and so I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm learning a lot here and yeah. and uh, and you're telling us how you got into all your your things. So, oh, yeah. I think I think I'm doing a fantastic job so far of this podcast um let's see so we covered off audio narrator consultant uh producer and then what what else was there uh i also write and i'm i'm an actor with an imdb page right 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 okay so we can talk about acting because we've already touched that a bit um you know, you're you're very proud of your IMDb page. That's exciting. Uh, you know, I didn't really think about it for a few years, at least, until I, I was talking with somebody, and they're like, 
you need to go talk to this person because they, you know, they're really into that. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, and it's like, he came up and said, oh, I heard you have an IMDb page. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, literally screaming in my face. I'm like, you know, this seems to be important to some people. Oh, he was screaming at you that, that you should have one or are you, or he, or he was talking about his own. He's like, yeah, I have an IMDb page. Yeah. No, just that he was so excited to meet someone with an IMDb page. You're oh. like automatic celebrity to some people. Really? Oh, that's why yeah. you, you, you make it one word. I'm an actor with an IMDb page. That's my, my yeah, full title. That's, that's, that's why I mentioned it. Some people are like, you know, their eyes glaze over and they have no idea what you're talking about. But people who know what you're talking about start jumping up and down in excitement. Ooh, so yeah, I'm so happy to meet someone with an IMDb page. Yeah, so for the, for listeners who don't know, it stands for Internet Movie Database, or Database, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, and, yes, yeah, so you can't just make, it's not like, oh, I just made a Facebook page. Like, you have to have, like, a, a legit credit, yeah. like, some kind of thing that yeah. was on TV or radio or, yeah. I guess, I don't know what else, yeah. stuff, film, that kind of thing. Yes. yes. So, yes, yeah, so I made myself one a few years ago. I did, A lot of people wouldn't think. Like, they don't normally, nobody comes to you and says you need one. Like, you're like, oh, you got to make your own. And then I would start looking up. It's interesting things because I loved adding things. Like if I was in the news or in a debate for when yeah. I was running for mayor, I'd go look up, okay, what's the TV station it was on or the channel or the, the show? And then I would add my thing. And it took me a long time because yeah. there's so many things you got to put, like, at, like what it is and what your other sub roles are and yeah. producer. And it, yeah. yeah, it takes forever. But I've, I've gradually added stuff. And then, yeah, yeah, because I remember I, I got into, like, I told a girlfriend of mine, or she was an ex, but then I got her back. But, but while we were broken up in the middle, uh, I told her to start a, a film festival. Or no, just before. But then I know she started it after we broke up. A little small town film festival. And then it was somehow legit. I, don't, I can't remember what made it legit. But I was able to say, oh, I had a film in this film festival, so now I can add it to IMDb and stuff. Yeah. Which, which is, I guess, a reason to do things like that. If you can get a film in a film festival or if you can uh, get on a community cable show or like yes. anything that might be imdb able, it's good yes. to do there because then you can... Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's legit stuff. And then... Yeah. The other nice thing is if you type my name mm -hmm. into Google, yeah. that's one of the first things that come up. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So you got this really nice IMDb page thing that comes up. It's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> She's, she's she's legit. It's not just yeah. yeah. It makes you really legit. So it's like Man. yeah. It's cool. I'm gonna have to start mentioning that. I'm gonna have to put it in my Instagram bio or my the little link to my IMDb. I wish, and I don't know if IMDb is changing now, but like with LinkedIn, I I never was into never was into it because I was like, oh, it's just like a boring work thing. But now it's like a big thing, and and it's got the same. You can do stories and voice messages and post your videos and interact with people. Yes. Um, I wish IMDb was more like that, so you could make a page, but then people could, I guess people can comment maybe, or give little reviews on things, but I don't know how much you can, how interactive it is, like why somebody would go there, I guess, unless they're, they're you know, looking up your credentials or maybe for yeah. film geeks, but you can get the pro version too, where you can find out more about people and find yeah. Steven Spielberg's email address or whatever. Yeah, I, I have the pro version because then you can upload your resume and stuff like that. So okay, so that's good. Yeah, because that you can get up your videos, your photos, or yep. whatever, and yep. that's and that's a good thing to yep. direct people to because then yes, again, it's better than oh, here's my little WordPress or my Wix. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so you and I guess you could. Do you have your odd? Can you put audiobook credits on there? I don't know. No. Although I have, I did, uh, I have a game, a video game credit on there. Video oh. game credits go on there. Yeah, yeah, I've done a few so, of those. Yeah. And they can look impressive. Like, I think I got some audition once for, like, a Harry Potter game. And I think it was just, like, as a ghost. I probably just said, woo, like, just, I don't know. So yeah. I, and that's it. But now I'm ghost in Harry Potter game with Warner yeah. Brothers or something. And it yeah. sounds pretty uh -huh. impressive. And yes. it, even, even I found, like, just some obscure game. What's it called? Like, West Westworld 3 or something. I don't know, but I found on YouTube some kid had posted, like, my character. I was playing, like, a, a Topekan teenager. And uh -huh. then these clips of me doing my things. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm an actual thing now. This is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, 
made sure to get that on IMDb. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, actor, and then but you, so so you've also done like like on camera or theater, like what yes. kind of acting? Yeah, uh, camera. Yeah, I have several movie credits on Ooh. IMDb. Um, yeah, of nice. indie film. Yeah. Cool, cool. And they were done in Seattle. Yep. And how do you get those? Is there a, a local Seattle, like, I mean, the old days, you'd go to the schools and say, you know, look at the posting on the Bolton board, like who's looking for something for the film school or something? Yeah, well, I have, well, I have an agent. I have an agent Yeah. Uh, here in town that I get some of those through. And then it's just, you know, postings or I get to know people um, and they think of me. So, yeah. Cool. Well, that's fun. And is, is Seattle like a creative city? Lots going on? Yes, it huh. is. It's it's a small community, but there's there's lots going on. We just, uh, what we have lacked for many, many years was a soundstage. We now have a soundstage. Ooh, so that's, is it, and I guess, does that mean like real, like Hollywood people would come up and move? I guess they wouldn't. Yes, it's, oh, yeah. it's a much bigger attraction now, too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still, I think they'd like that because it, I mean, they shoot in Vancouver a lot because of the Canadian dollar, but also yep. because you can go straight up, it's the same time zone, all of that. They don't want to go yep. all the way to Toronto. Yeah. So, so then yep. Seattle could be a bit of a Hollywood North as well if they want to stay in the country, but have it cheaper, but also be in the same time zone. Yes. Yeah. Zip home to their Hollywood mansions in the evenings and then go back to yeah. Seattle. Yeah. And, you know, Portland is really busy. Oh. Uh, they're really a big um, film and TV place now. So that's cool. I was there once, I ah, like fifteen years ago. It's funny every every story I say now, it's like it was fifteen years ago because I know it wasn't ten years ago. It was longer, but I don't want to say twenty. <laughs> yeah. it seems like fifteen years ago, I did quite a bit. It seems, but we shot a commercial there, like using a an animation house, but it was puppets. And uh, yeah, and, and it, the commercial got pulled off the air immediately because it was a bunch of puppets, like animal puppets, sticking their heads up dryer vents, and each one was smelling a different scent of bounce or gain detergent. Oh. Um, which ones they like? And then one person wrote in and said, "That's dangerous. What if a kid? You shouldn't be smelling dryer vents or something. Or what if a kid gets his head stuck in a dryer? I don't know. Whatever." And they're like, "Oh, you're right. It's dangerous." Right. Okay. So it's a beaver puppet with his head up a dryer vent, but still. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I remember the city was very cute. And I remember downtown, the blocks were just, they were tiny. Like uh, 10 steps is a block and now you're on another block. And it's like, oh, it's like, like you can yeah, run. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely very different from how Seattle's laid out. So, yeah. yeah. I've never been to Seattle, so I'll have to come check that out. And maybe, maybe I start a grunge band or something there. <laughs> uh, are you, have you always been in Seattle? Uh, no, I was born in the Midwest in Ohio. Mm. Um, lived there for, and I, I, I hated it. I never. I hate the Midwest. I hate the weather. Because <laughs> is it just hot and cold, or hot, humid in the summer? Bugs. Yeah. Um, just I don't. I prefer the you know the West mountains. Yeah lakes um things yeah and water like and humans want to be near water yes yes we got right. lots of it here so yeah <laughs> and then so then and, and do you start acting once you got to seattle is that where you discovered it uh yeah actually i did yeah started my acting career in seattle yeah were you doing another job at the time and or was oh yeah you yeah. know i um I was in the corporate world for many years. I was in uh, purchasing. Yeah. Oh, I love purchasing. I don't, I don't like sp paying the bills, but I like to purchase. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I just got to buy, and then I didn't have to pay the bills. The company right. paid. That's, <laughs> That's good. What, what were you purchasing? Um, generally, um, I worked for many years biotechnology. Oh. And then I worked for uh, also a semiconductor company. That was really interesting. Those are the two big things. When I started buying stocks 20 years ago, semiconductors were the huge thing. It's like yeah. I got to invest in semiconductors. And then I also got into biotech stocks. And I, I just yeah. abandoned the semiconductors, but I just started trading biotech stocks again a couple of days ago. And I'm pretty proud of myself. I did a good trade. I bought this stock 
Sezen, I think. I don't know what the full mm -hmm. name is, but it, I bought it $3.98 because they had a uh, an FDA decision coming up on August 18th, and things tend to run up towards that. Yeah. And, then, and then two days. So I bought it on Tuesday, and then on Thursday, it shot up. Or no, yeah, Thursday. It sh uh, yeah, shot up Thursday, and I sold it at $4.76. So oh. I'm like, okay, pretty good. That's like... 25 yeah. percent or something i had 11 yeah. 1195 shares and then it kept going up i'm like oh man i should have held on to it uh, yeah <laughs> and then today it was up again it went up to like six dollars i'm like oh crap wow but but then i checked again like 10 minutes ago i'm like well oh it's at two dollars now so what happened was and it's like a straight line down so what happened was yeah. uh, they got a crl a complete response letter which is basically the fda saying uh your drug's not good but and but what happened was, and I'm learning this now, I wish I'd known this a couple of years ago, is it used to be that uh, companies would, like if they have an FDA decision coming up, if it's the 18th, you'll find out on the 18th whether they got it or not, uh -huh. whether their drug was approved. So it was kind of a safe bet to try to go for the run up and then sell it before that decision. But, yes. uh, but now the FDA, I guess, tells them earlier. And I, I think there's really? like a, a legal, I think they're legally bound to reveal it as soon as they know it. So like two years oh. ago, just before the pandemic, I put like, I don't know, $200,000 into a stock. I was like, this is going to go up. But a month before it was supposed to have the decision, they got a, a, a CRL and then it tanked. Oh, oh, and I, no. I even contacted the company. I'm like, why, why did you do that? And like, oh, we have to tell people. And I'm like, oh, yeah. so now I know. So I was all like, oh, I'm sad I got out. But I would have been very, very sad if uh, today I bought, I was almost bought into it again. I'm like, mm, maybe yeah. I'll get it at $6. It's like, no, now it's like, yeah. so good for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, so biotech's fun and semiconductors are fun. And then, so how, well, like, how did you, did you go to acting school or you just suddenly, how did you get your first acting thing? Well, I've always been a singer and I sang in choir for years and I got bored with choir. And then it's like, well, I'd like to do singing again, you know, and it's like, well, where else can I do singing? And a blind date took me to a Gilbert and Sullivan production. Ooh. And on the back of the program, it said, we're looking for chorus members. Come audition. So I did. <laughs> and in the next production, I was a fairy in Iolanthe. And it's like, well, this is a lot more fun than standing on risers in a black dress. <laughs> Yes. This, I got I had a wand and I got wings and it's like, hey. <laughs> That's so fun. And that was in Seattle? I was in Seattle. Cool. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. And then it was, you know, I really want to be at the front of the stage. Mm. And so that meant taking acting lessons and it just, you know, yeah. That's Kept cool. At it, got to the front of the stage, uh, then got into film. Um, I sort of like I like film because, you know, theater's nice, but it's a black hole for time. Yeah. And so, and then it's done and there's nothing more with film. It's like, you know, there's IMDb now and there's like, you know, stuff you can show people. Yeah, yeah. You put and the film on, out there. You put so it on YouTube like, and it's there forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I prefer doing, yeah, film at this point. Yeah, that's that's the thing too. I like, I yeah, I like the fact that I film something and it's there, and you can send it to people, and it's around forever. Yeah. Theater is just like for the yeah. ten people that are there, because even if you film yeah. theater, nobody's gonna sit there and watch a play on video. No. No. Uh, stand up's a bit different. Like now, I would film it so that I can, you know, maybe get a little clip well, on yeah. TikTok yeah. or something. But uh, but the fun thing about theater that I miss that I don't know if I ever fully appreciate it's it's. I mean, especially when you're young and you're in school, it's like oh, it's like going to camp. Like we're all doing this play together, and we yeah. eat for three hours, and we bond, and then we have our cast party, and we're all in love with each other and everything. So that's kind of fun. So sometimes, every now and then, I consider, well, why don't I try doing that again, like a community theater, and just yeah. look up. Yeah, you know, I could be like a detective in a play or something, and yeah. create this thing. Yeah. Um, so but then I never do it because then it's like, oh, yeah, how much time do I have to spend? And then the pandemic's been on for two years anyway, so there's nothing going oh, on. Yeah. Yeah. But but there's lots of things like even even uh, in the winter, I just decided suddenly I was like, huh. You know, I've been in Ottawa. There's nothing going on. I'm kind of bored. 
I never did extra work in Toronto, even though I signed up for a couple of agencies. I was like, ah, it seems uh-huh. like it's time. But uh-huh. then I thought, well, maybe I could see if they need any extras in Ottawa, and especially yeah. like, I'm a union actor, so they might. And so I emailed an agency, and then right away she was like, oh yeah, do you want to be a cop on Friday in this Hallmark type of movie? And I'm like, sure. Wow. So I went over and I, yeah. and it was just fun. Again, it was like, yeah, you just meet the people, you chat, you just sort of have to do your little role, and yeah. And so, yeah. so yeah, anything like that is a fun way to meet people and be sociable all of that um so it was the acting and then there was writer as well so what kind of writing i just do blogging yeah Um, generally i do blog about health and wellness i'm health editor for women of wisdom magazine it's an online publication women of wisdom yeah yeah that's for women over 40 yes Ah, oh, is that what of wisdom yeah. means? <laughs> I, I've met some non-wise with women over 40, but sure, we'll uh, say they're yeah. all wise. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And um, I have uh, I've written some comedy stuff that's published on medium.com. I'm on medium.com. Oh, that's another one I keep hearing about, like that yeah. you got a medium. So what is that? Yeah. It's a really large writing and blogging article platform. Um, that pays um, a lot of their writers. So, um, so right. it's like, yeah, you can just go out there and publish whatever, but then they have publications that you can submit to. I like to submit to publications because generally you get more views there. So. Yeah, you look all, you look, and then, you know, yeah. builds, builds your audience. They're like, oh, I want to yes. see what, what else Chris yeah. Kepler has written. Yeah. And, oh my God, she has like, an IMDb. 1,500 followers out there now. So, wow. So yeah. on, on medium, so they can click follow on you. Medium. Yeah. So they can follow you. So I have lots of, um, and I have a lot of favorite writers on medium that, uh, I narrate their stories for my podcast. Uh, you narrate their stories for your podcast. Yes. Okay. Yes. So w- what does that mean? Well, I, it, it's like a micro, my podcast is like a micro audio book. Okay. So the stories are about usually five to ten minutes long. Oh, so like short stories. So like you yeah. see a writer and you do you contact yeah. them and say, hey, yeah. do you want me to narrate this? Yeah, yeah. And they'll so say. So it's, you know, they have uh, another way to get their story out there to people who like to listen rather than read. And uh, and most writers really, you know, I have some that don't want to work with me, but most writers are like really excited you know, to hear their story in an audio format. Yeah. And I, do they pay you? No. No, no, I don't. No, I don't yes. charge you anything. It's so, all free. It's it's like yeah. free PR. Yeah. Right. So they, but they couldn't, could they even stop you? Like, couldn't you just read a book on your podcast? Like, what are they, I don't even know if they could leave. Yeah, legally. I don't want to violate people's copyright. No, so. no, yeah, it's still, but I guess they, I mean, I could probably just read a book and put it on a podcast. I don't know what that would happen. Never occurred to me. But of course, it's better if you, yes, you'd, you'd want to work with them. Like you know, yes. have them agree, and then they can promote yeah. it and all this kind of thing. Yes, then they can promote it. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's a big thing is they get to you know they I send them a link and say you know share this, you know wherever. So yeah, and I feel I feel like that's the the benefit of you know even doing this podcast where yes. I can talk to you and then you'll post yeah, yeah. it and all your followers. Yes. They'll, they'll yes. discover me and go, oh my God, he's the best podcast guy ever. I'll listen to him too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or I can turn them all off immediately and then not have to worry about it again. I was like, okay, well, at least we're done with those. <laughs> the, 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 the women of wisdom, they're done with me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So let me think. We had writer, actor, oh, medium. Okay. Yeah. Medium. Yeah. Because I've been listening to like James Altucher's podcast lately and, and he's kind uh-huh. of a multi hyphenate guy and he talks a lot about, he's mentioned medium and he, he writes a lot for, uh, Quora, like he'll answer questions on Quora. Yeah. And then he says yep. he's like the number one guy there and he's got 150,000 or millions of followers or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, and he talks about how, yeah, just go in there when he coaches people. It's like, just go in there and start answering questions and then you'll become yep. the expert on bridal things or whatever it is that you're an expert on. So that's another example. All these things I'd never thought of. Right. Like, why am I wasting time posting on Facebook? I can go discuss things on Quora and get followers there. Yeah. And, and whatever it is, you're promoting your thing. Okay, now you're yeah. answering questions on voice acting, and then people might be like, oh, I've got this book, and oh, yeah, well, I'll narrate your book, and it's all kind of thing. So, and you write, so what do you write? Okay, so what do you write for women of wisdom and medium? Uh, it's generally about health and wellness. 
stop right. fitness. Is it yeah, stuff? I'm into pump? fitness. I go to the gym three times a week. Clearly. I recently got back to going to the gym. You know, we I did it here at home. Yeah. While COVID was well, it's still raging, but while COVID was yeah. Yeah. Raging. Wait. So yeah. And um do you like the health stuff? Do you I guess where would you get your information? Would you find like find things on like is it just out of your own head or is you find things online? You're like, I can write about this topic or uh it's it's both. It's both things that uh, you know i'm interested in um, i like doing research you know mm. um so things that i'm interested in and then i you know and find did, out more things and and write about it so yeah and then do you have to pitch it to women of wisdom or that you just like no this? no uh since i'm health editor i just put it up there oh you're the health editor and do you, are there other people that contribute things that you would look to what oh, they write yeah. Oh. yeah yeah there's yeah she has several contributors Oh, oh, and is that how did you get the the health editing position there? I just emailed her and said, you know, guess I'm, what? I'm interested. She said, what do you want to write about? Write about? I said, I'm interested in health stuff, you know, and give me so many articles that it can be health editor. I said, okay. <laughs> cool. That's fine. How did you find out about her site? Just sort of. Uh, I. See. I saw it on a PR site that I get, you know, they put out, people are looking for such and such. And so I saw it there. And, yeah. Oh, that's a good thing. PR yeah. site. Yeah. Cause I know there's a site where reporters post that they're looking for people to quote. Oh us. yeah. That's, that's it's... Haro. Um, I, yeah, I, I did a few things out there. I didn't get that much out of it. So I might check that out. And what's the, what's the PR site? Oh, let's see. I guess I Goodness. could just I could just Google PR site and see what um, I Um it does have a specific name. Hang on. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, no oh, worries. Oh, pitch. It's something about pitch. pitch All right. Rate. People can uh, look it up if they want. I'm not uh, we don't we don't need to give them completely free advice. They can sign up for your uh, your course. Okay. <laughs> Um, so have we covered all the, the jobs, audio narrator, producer, consultant, writer, actor? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So that's what, uh, I think when I went to your website, I, I was in, inundated with all of that. Yeah. And then we, and we met on pod match, which matches people yep. up with guests. And have yeah. you been on, have been on that long? I mean, I don't think. Yeah, for a while, yeah. for a while. It's, I must... it's taken a little bit to get matched with the right people, but. Yeah, I must have signed up a year ago or something. Maybe I found out about it when I went to Podfest just before the pandemic or something. Um, oh, yeah, I was there. Yeah. Oh, in Orlando? Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. That was fun, right? That was very fun. I enjoyed it, yes. Yeah, that was my big... Because I sold my condo in July 2019. I'm, I want to be free to travel, but I didn't go anywhere. I was staying in hotels in Toronto, <laughs> Ottawa. And then finally I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to go to the conferences. And there was this... Israeli lobby group conference I wanted to go to in Washington again that I'd gone to, but I didn't book it soon enough. And you gotta, and then I was like, all right. And then I was like, I'm gonna go to Podfest then. I'm just gonna go. And yeah, it was so much fun. And then there was sort of word about COVID at the time. Like even when we were there, it's like, oh, don't shake hands. It's COVID. Ha <laughs> yeah. ha. But that didn't stop us from just eating food off, you know, buffet tables and stuff. Yeah. And then I, somebody gave me a ride to Tampa and I was in a hotel there. And then that's when everybody was like, oh, you're not supposed to, don't, people look at my Instagram stories going, don't touch your face. Yeah. And I'm like, what? No, Tom Hanks has COVID. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then, and then I was going to stay in Miami I, and my mom's like, oh, the border's closing. You gotta come back. I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. So yeah. that was, that was it. But I've, I've done <laughs> some pod, pod fest things online lately. Uh, like they've done some on, virtual conferences. Oh yeah, they have. Yeah. They did some, uh, did quite a bit of virtual stuff for a while. Yeah. And I, I didn't. I didn't like watch them all. And then I think one, one of the recent ones, I was like, you know what? I'll pay for the ticket afterwards so that I can access all the videos of all the presentations. So I thought, of course I'll want, and I've, and, you know, so I paid a hundred or $200 for that. And of course I've watched nothing. I'm never going to go back six months later. And <laughs> yeah. watch somebody talk about how to get YouTube stats. It's probably That's all. Not even... thing. Yeah, yeah. 
oh, that was dumb. Because at the time, I had FOMO. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to see what they said about how to monetize yeah. YouTube or something. So yeah. they got they got me. Um, but I've, I've met some even cool people there, I think, that I've interviewed for my podcast. Yeah, I met, uh, yeah, I met a lot of people. It was great, yeah. Yeah, so I hopefully... Hopefully we can get back into something like that because I felt like this was like it was like frosh week for grownups. We all get to, to hang out and go. And we all have a dance party and all of this. Yes. I know they're having another. I don't know if it's passed yet, but I was uh, they were doing some kind of uh, another in person one. I think in Orlando again um, this summer at some point. So uh -huh. I yeah I don't know what the the travel rules are right now. Whether I can just go to the U S. and show up and I'm like I'm here, or whether I have to quarantine if I come back. Or I don't know. What, but, I don't know. It's like an ever-changing... Yeah, so I figured yeah. I should just keep hustling down here and, and make a billion dollars and whatever. Yeah. So we're working on that. <laughs> we... <laughs> um, and so, yeah, have you, you... you It was... So that's... Oh, that's okay. So I signed up for this pod match thing, and I think it was only a couple of weeks ago that maybe I got an email saying you haven't been on it lately or something. I'm like, what is this thing? So I actually looked. I'm like, oh, I can click on people, and then boom. Because, yeah. yeah, even over the winter, I... I emailed, I interviewed a few people just I met randomly on LinkedIn or something um, or Instagram. But then I decided, you know what, I should start doing this regularly. So, it, and, and, and it's interesting. Like I've done, I guess you're my seventh interview in the past week. And I, I still, wow. have, to, I still have to do the other ones, like upload the other wow. ones. And I, actually, I did five from them. And then a, a girl I met on LinkedIn just randomly, some student told me about her media thing. But yeah, I'm on fire now. So I need to get them up. Yeah. Um, but but I find that, yeah, the site is good because you're being matched with people who want yep. to talk. I find that yes. a lot of times I'll message random people or or just people like on Shaper app or different apps. And I'll be like, yeah. oh, I can chat with you on my podcast just as a way of having something useful. Because otherwise, I don't want to yeah. just talk to people that I'm like, oh, now i got to talk to somebody on the phone. I'm like, okay, if I can get content of this. But a lot of people are like, oh, what would we talk about? Why would I want to talk? I'm like, okay, forget it. Yeah. But it, but if you're somebody like you that wants to talk and, and then yeah. it it works out well and so yeah so you've been doing it lately to or, or you were saying it's tough to get find the good matches or for me uh yeah for me i have a hard time finding good matches so yeah nobody knows what to do with the audio narrator writer actor kind of thing i don't know yeah unless i connect with i've been on a few book related podcasts because mm. It's like, oh, we talked to authors and stuff. Oh, we should talk to an audiobook narrator. So yeah, yeah, those, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think because I don't really know what this podcast is yet. <laughs> like, I feel <laughs> it's gradually. I thought I was going to be interviewing celebrities, and like I did on red carpets, and then I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. First of all, celebrities aren't even allowed to talk to most people. Like, they have to check their agent, and like, yeah. but also, what would I even talk to them about? And then I was like, okay, well, maybe. I'm just talking to random creative people, but as I do it more, I feel like it's kind of a yeah, learning how people do what they do, how to make a living being creative, how to be successful. Uh, so hopefully, people will find it interesting. They say like, well, I don't know who said this, but if you talk to if you just talk to people you're interested in, then maybe there's people like you that might be also interested in these people or whatever. Yes, I have gotten uh, actually. It turns out that. Meeting lots and lots of people has turned out to be great for my business and especially the virtual, you know, choosing the right virtual channel. Because, um, yeah, the more people you meet, the more people are probably going to, you know, you can help along or they can help you along. So, um, yeah, and I think that's. <sighs> That's basically it. Like every every person becomes an exponential. Okay, now you're. Yeah. I, I, James Altucher was just saying, like on LinkedIn, even the stats show that most people don't get a job from the people they know, but they do get a job from the friends of the friends they know. So it's like yeah. if you talk to somebody now, maybe they know yeah. somebody who can connect you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I guess oh now I was I was I was trying to think of when did somebody tell me this? But it was yesterday. I was talking. No. 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 No, it wasn't a guy I interviewed. I was watching a Creative Mornings presentation by this guy, Jay, Jay Klaus or something, who gave a talk uh -huh. on, on how to podcast. And I, I, I wasn't sure I wanted to do it because I, I, saw, I saw the topic was like how to podcast on a budget or something. Well, I don't care about, you know, saving $10 yeah. or whatever. But right. it was interesting. He just talked about his whole process about how he edits and books people. And, and he said, yeah, like having the podcast is fun because he can has an excuse to chat with someone that otherwise – there would be no reason to do that. Like it's, you, you don't call somebody and say, Hey, can I just, or, yeah. or he was saying his, his first big interview was Seth Godin. 
and uh, that was his first episode. And he's like, oh my god, like, and but otherwise he wouldn't have been able to call Seth and say, can I pick your brain for an hour? But with a podcast, it gives you an excuse to talk to people. Yep. And and then it's also just fun because I get lonely. I like talking to people, but then it's oh, yeah. making content at the same time. And and yeah, it gives you a reason. Like I've been surprised at some of the people I messaged on on like some big supermodel woman on Instagram. It's like, yeah, I'll talk to you. And then I just got so many messages after I can't find where her message was and I can't remember her oh, name. No! <laughs> so I'm trying I'm trying to go through my thousands of Instagrams to delete them all. It almost seems to stop me from deleting too many at once. I'm like, I've got to find this woman again. I keep googling. British supermodel, and I'm like, no, nah, she's old up. I'm like, this is, ugh. So hopefully I can find her. But yeah, uh, that, I think that would be interesting to interview a supermodel. Wow. Yes, very yeah. interesting. And then uh, the other idea I had a couple of days ago was just because I I'm, I'm working on my jokes for round two of a stand up comedy contest, and, uh-huh. and like, so I'd like to talk to other comedians. Just yeah, I mean that that was my original plan actually when I thought about podcasting Mark Maron. He started in his backyard interviewing his comedian friends. I'm like, I can talk yep. to comedian friends. Um, and I thought, actually, well, there is a podcast called, where they sort of analyze a joke and ask the comedian how he came up with it and why it's funny and all that. But I thought I could do the same kind of thing. So I just messaged a bunch of comedians on Instagram and, mm-hmm. and said, hey, and, and like tons of them have said, sure, I'll do that and stuff. So now I'm Boy. like, oh, I guess, yeah. And then I can find out what it's like to be a comedian in L.A. and Maybe I can get in that community and hopefully all their friends will listen to it. And yeah. yeah. And it's so it's and, yeah. and my mom's been saying, like, so where can people find your podcast? Like, you seem to be putting a lot of work into it now. Like, but I also on YouTube, I just post random clips of me just walking around or talking to ducks or whatever uh-huh. I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, I should make at least a playlist saying here is my podcast. And so people can find it in that way. Maybe I can just focus on that because it seems like a way of combining all, like like you were saying, you you combine your acting and your singing, and that's what. So I mean, this combines my my comedy because I can be funny, but also my desire to talk to people, and yep. um, I can put anything into it. I could I yeah. could read my yeah. jokes. I was thinking I could. One another idea I had for a podcast was like maybe I interview people, but we we come up with a short story together. We just sort of brainstorm it, and I type as we're doing it, and by the end of it, we've got a oh, one yeah. short story <laughs> where we've got a character. I could say we're gonna write a Christmas story or something. Uh, yeah. That could be fun, like just a, a different way of talking to somebody rather than just asking about their life. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what it all becomes. I had some some other deep thought to add there, but I, I can't even remember what it was now. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, what do you think about this for the name of my podcast? Because I've been calling it Celebrity Josh, but I had an idea to, because I want to come up with another name for myself that's shorter, and I keep coming to the name Spark. I'm like, Spark would be cool because i could be like sting or pink like just one syllable oh Uh, yeah uh but uh, i can't get spark.com or anything like that but i was able to get spark the genius and i thought okay so that could be like my name i'm spark the genius but also it's like my mantra like i'm gonna help you spark the genius it's like you know this life coaching kind of thing Uh and then and then that's why i'm talking to people to help everybody spark the genius within them kind of thing so do you like that idea yeah that's good yeah my other possible name is Juice Box, just because I did comedy last uh, last month about juice boxes, and then uh-huh. uh, uh, juice boxes. That's a good one too. You like juice box? Wow. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll just. All right. Maybe I'll be a different name every week and just see what what. <laughs> cool. So if people want to find you, they can look up your IMDb page. I guess is yes. that your main thing, or or your uh-huh. medium, or your. I don't know. Where do you drive people? Do you, does everybody go to chriskepler.com and then they find all your stuff, or? Yeah, you can find all my stuff at chriskepler.com. Yeah. Mm. That's a good place uh, to drive people. Because I find that I've discovered, like, even in April, they shut down my Facebook page for a day. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm off Facebook. So, you know, if you're driving people to your Instagram or anything, any of your social media yeah. could disappear at any time. So you might as well get people going to your site and sign up for your yeah. email newsletter, which I need to yeah. start. That'd be cool. Yes. Oh. But I'm on Twitter a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you? Yeah, I, I told you I'm in a Twitter storm right now. So. Yeah. Um, I might message the woman I commented on saying, okay, everybody's ganging up on me now. Um, but, uh, I could interview you for my podcast about your, your thing. Do you want to hear that story of the, the Twitter, uh, firestorm? Oh yeah. Okay. So it's just this woman. I, I don't know how it even came up in my feed. I don't really follow anybody on Twitter, but, uh, some female doctor just posted like to the woman who called me up. Well, the B word, uh, that rhymes with which, uh, uh-huh. today, 
just so you know, I'm a doctor. I was on I was on my way to my 15 hour shift, and I'm allowed to look tired, and I'm the, in the pandemic that's just getting worse or whatever. I didn't really read the whole thing. I just skimmed it quick, and I just thought. Uh, so I just commented. So what? Because I was just curious. Why did she randomly call you a B? Like what? Yeah. So I just said, um, yeah, why did she call you that? Like, did you have a discussion beforehand? And then I was a bit of a, a passive aggressive guy. I was like, and if, if she if you know she reads your tweets, why didn't you just you know, even if you know she reads your tweets, why didn't you just discuss it with her at the time? So I, I knew in my head that, of course, this woman, she wasn't really tweeting to that woman saying to the woman who did this. Um, but uh, but then so people have been piling on saying you're men. Oh, and and uh, and we, you know why? Why? Of course, you're you're telling the uh, the 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 victim of the abuse that it's her fault. I'm like, I know. I was just asking what what was this, and and then I was like, okay, maybe. Okay, it sounds like I read it again. So it sounds like she was l- looking tired, leaving her apartment, and some woman neighbor thought she looked. She was making a mean face, and and then the doctor replied, no, it was I was at work, and I'm like, so I still don't understand what happened. It's, wow. I, it's like, so you were in the hospital in the elevator and a woman just randomly as she's walking out goes beach. And I'm like, why would, <laughs> what? And then he's like, you don't understand what it's like to be a woman. And I'm like, it's a woman who said it. Anyway. So, but of course, what I've learned, first of all, is that there's no point in, co- like, if you say anything on Twitter, people are going to pile on and yeah, for people like you're sea lioning her. I'm like, sea lion. What is that? <laughs> oh it God. must be like <laughs> gaslighting, I guess. And you're being ratioed, and I think that means more comments to likes. So it means people are, it's showing that they dislike. I'm like, why does even anybody even care about my stupid little tweet? Like, I don't, I don't know how this has become a thing, but maybe I can get a story, a story out of it. But oh yes, oh you were saying you're on Twitter. That was what sparked yes. that. Okay, so you, do you comment on Twitter? Do you? Uh, I generally share, and it's I'm sharing funny stuff. I love comedy. And I think it's good to laugh. So I'm generally sharing funny stuff, especially from, you know, the writers, the humor writers that I'm connected with because of my podcast. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Also, the uh, is the podcast all funny stories? It's all funny stories about life and befuddlement. Oh, man. That reminds me of, there was this guy, I guess he passed away, but he was on CBC Radio in Canada. What was the show called? Ah, uh, the... Was it the Vinyl Cafe or no? That's a radio, sh- like a music show, I think. There was something about he would read these. It might have been the Vinyl Cafe, actually. Like he he would come up with these short stories every week. It would be like a different short story about this little town. And when I was younger, I assumed uh-huh. these these. I thought these were true stories. Like he knew this town, and it was all these little things happening. But of course, it's one of those things when you're older. You're like, no, no, no. He made those up. But he would tour around and do those live readings, and it was just such a comforting thing for people. They love. Yeah fun little short yeah. stories yeah. yeah how did you come and up most, with, yeah. yeah most of these stories i do are true i specialize in nonfiction. So. non but funny stories that are non-fiction funny, yeah weird stuff about you know you know uh i once got in an argument with the checkout clerk at safeway about jalapenos <laughs> oh, see that could be a five minute stand-up act <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait so that's that happened to you that happened to me, yeah. And you wrote that? You So you wrote a short story about it, or that you wrote it I up? I actually wrote a short, short story about it, yes. Okay, so that you, all, you should definitely do that as a stand-up act, first of all. Yes. Um, and then, and then you, wrote, you read that for your podcast? Yeah, I think, or else I... Yeah, I think I read it for my podcast, yeah. But your podcast is mostly other people's funny stories. It's mostly other people's stories, but sometimes I do my own, yes. Okay, so it's kind of like... Like Reader's Digest, where somebody might tell the, you know, here's a funny story that happened with my kids or something. Yes, yes. Oh. How did you come up with that idea to be like, I'm going to read stuff off of Medium? Um, well, I started out with bloggers that I liked, and then I got into Medium, and it's like, oh, there's just some really great writers and stories out there. So it's like, um, yeah, just sort of... Um, Finding different writers and having a variety, but it, it's all on a theme. Because uh, my podcast is, does this happen to you? Oh. So it's about, it's about you know weird, mundane things in in life. Yeah, like a Seinfeld act. It's like you know, and that's yeah, you know, yeah. it is 
sort of like, yeah. Larry totally David, bad. like, it's, you know. It's, you know, nothing really, you know, you know, t- trying to get the, you know, Safeway checkout person who doesn't speak English to understand jalapeno. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good topic, yeah. Well, that's good, because, I mean, that's I, when I wrote my act last month to enter the summer contest, like, I did it last year, the summer contest, and it was all these little bits. I was trying to be so clever, like, uh, here's a science fiction short story I wrote, and here's my thoughts on uh, what if I could go back in time and tell somebody in the past about future technology, whatever. But this time I decided, you know what, I'm just going to talk about uh, getting my second vaccine, about how I commented that the the syringes were the same color as the nurse's shirt and she's like huh and i'm like oh my god that makes me sound creepy or whatever and i just i just so for just five minutes or six minutes i just talked about getting the vaccine and it's like and i wound up winning first prize of the night this time so it's like wow yeah so it kind of works and so i'm just trying to think of what's my little anecdote so even just being able to notice the things in life like aha trying to get the lady to understand like making a note of that that's what makes for great comedy and yeah most people things just happen and you know, it doesn't occur to you that, oh, that's, that could be something. Yeah. And that's why Seinfeld's book is called, is this something? Yeah. Very cool. That's, that's brilliant. I might, I'm jealous of all your ideas. It makes me, and this is exactly the kind of thing that James Altucher does. And that I've been looking for other people that do this, that just th- think of an idea. Hey, here's an idea. I'm going to read stories for people and going to combine my <laughs> skills. And it's a yeah. smart way of repurposing content. There's already stories out there that you yes. can say, okay, I'm going to read them. Yeah. Not, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And then you, and then all these authors will be like, oh, this is the expert on this. And then people want to listen to it. Are you able to see how, how many listeners you get to the podcast or like uh, have people responded or? Yeah. Yeah. The podcast has been all over the place because um, it, it's very niche because people think podcast, they think this interview. It's, yeah. It's not that. And it's not audio drama either. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so <clears throat> I it's been all over the place. I don't, uh, I, it was going really great guns before the pandemic. Um, I had somebody contact me about the podcast saying, Oh, it was on the top 200 in iTunes in comedy. I'm like, what? Wow. That's how you found me. Cause it was getting a lot of downloads. And then after the, the pandemic hit and it just dropped off, you know, mm. precipitously, I don't know why. Well, maybe people were listening on their commutes and stuff, and then they were just sitting at home. Yeah, then they stopped doing that. So it's been coming back up, and I've been working on ways to, you know, get it out there to more people. So That's pretty cool. Well, James Altucher says it's better to be the only than the best. So, you know, if you're the only person who's thought of reading funny live anecdotes, it's like, that's good, because we don't need another podcast like this one, where it's just some loser like (laughs) me talking to people for an hour. (laughs) And and even just in small bites, you know, I'd let I you know yeah. I'd want to tune into a bunch of little short stories right to an hour of this or whatever. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. All right. Well, I like that you're taking full advantage of modern technology and trying new things and using all your skills and yeah. all of that. And yeah. then you you've got your your in the background there. You've got your foam uh, blocks there for your voice acting. I guess. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That was yeah part of my. Did my, we just freeze? My studio, my actual we just studio froze. Why did we just freeze? Side, so. Oh, sorry, we just froze there. You were muted. What was that? Uh, yeah. Um, I that said you've got one of the things I used to use, and uh, but I but I have a, at my actual studio, fully enclosed studio, is off here to the side. So uh, cool, cool. Yeah, because I've got, I had a studio like in my old condo. I had these panels made for the walls and ceilings. Yep. It was perfect. But yep. now in my parents' basement, I've been trying to figure out what to do, and I. It occurred to me, hey, I've, I've got two old tripods, so I put those beside me, and I put a big blanket on top of me, and that's oh, kind yeah, of an. Oh yeah, that works. Yeah. It actually it yeah. works great because I've been struggling. I bought a portable voice booth for hotels that I was gonna go into, uh-huh. but it's such a pain to have to cram my computer in and hunch there, and I'm like, uh, that is not gonna end. So this this is my new solution that I think is, pre- and I'm yeah. gonna it's gonna be in one of one of my uh, you know the top ten voice acting hacks for my little Amazon book. So. Uh, yeah. 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 So we'll we'll see how my book does. Although I just gave away one of the tips, now nobody's going to buy my book. Um, <laughs> oh well. All right. Well, thanks so much, Chris. Well, I'll look for you at chriskepler.com. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, well, hopefully you can come on another time and we'll talk more about all the, the fun things you're working on. Yeah.